The next speaker is uh, Dr. Sean Moore, University of Limerick, and is going to chat about um, the, imp the um, opportunity of lean um, in relation to um, utilities, so effectively lean applied to utilities. So you heard earlier from Richard um, from Enterprise Ireland, who's quite passionate on the topic, and uh, Dr. Sean Moore is going to chat a little bit about the application and why we get to the gremlins. <coughs> Okay, um, I'll just introduce myself. First of all, I'm, I'm Sean, Dr. Sean Moore. I, um, I work in the University of Limerick. I started there in July of last year. Um, so my, my role in, in uh, UL at the moment is um, I'm a senior lecturer in Lean and Six Sigma, but up until July of uh, last year, I spent nine years with um, Abbott Vascular. And um, basically my role in Abbott Vascular was to implement Lean and Six Sigma methodologies across all the different um, Abbott Vascular sites. So prior to that, I spent 13 years with Aerospace and um, with Lufthansa in Shannon. And I also spent uh, five years with, with, with Homedica um, in Raheen. They're now, they're now the striker company. So I, I suppose I, I saw the, the change from um, functionally laid out uh, manufacturing all the way through to to the, the lean philosophy that, um, that is applied um, in a lot of manufacturing and service related in industries today. I also would have seen, um, I suppose, the reluctance to adopt lean and Six Sigma techniques in, you know, in support services like finance, IT, and uh, um, what I'm going to talk about today is, is, is the lean utilities side and how I've seen um, lean and Six Sigma programs be adopted in utilities and how it's, how it's been a, a huge success. I'm conscious I'm on the graveyard shift, so just to try and engage you um, and maybe wake you up a small bit, I'm just gonna run a small three question quiz. So uh, could everyone just take a sheet of paper um, and I'm just gonna ask three questions and what I want you to do is just quickly answer the three questions. Uh, it might wake some of you up. Okay. First question, a baseball bat and ball together cost a dollar and 10 cents. The bat costs one dollar more than the ball. How much is the ball? Second question, it takes five machines, five minutes to make five widgets. How long would it take a hundred machines to make a hundred widgets? And I've given you an option here, a hundred minutes or five minutes. And the last question, in a lake, there are a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take the patch to cover half the lake? And you have 24 days or 47 days. OK? Right, hand the sheet to a colleague or someone who's next door to you, so, so there will be no cheating. If you can't find someone who likes you, you can hold on to the hold on to the sheet. Are we ready? We'll just check the answers. If you answered ten cents to the first question, one hundred uh, minutes for the second question, and twenty-four days for the third question, you'd be wrong. Okay. The correct answers were five, five, and 47. So five cents, five minutes, and 47. So a show of hands, how many got all right? One, two, two, okay. Three, yeah, we have three, okay. Believe it or not, that's an experiment that Shane Frederick uh, carried out to um, display certain behavior in people. And he basically, he called it um, basically the ready, fire, aim response, OK? And basically, it's a system one response. Now, we had three people here who um, got all three right. 
that's probably above what his experimental results uh, actually reported. And he carried his experiment out on a group of Princeton students. Okay, so you know, they, even that group of people respond with this system one all the time. Now the problem with system one is it's running your life. It's out front. It's making decisions for you all the time. And most of you are probably hired based on system one responses. And most of you have hired, or some of you who are involved in hiring, have hired people based on your system one response. It's your instinct of response. It's your, your reaction to uh, how you perceive the world and the people around you. Unfortunately, we also use this in our day-to-day -day, uh, work if we're working in facilities or manufacturing or in service-related um, uh, environments. And the problem really is, is there is actually, System 1 would give you a clue that there must be some other mechanism that's working. But every one of us have this System 2 that's a lazy system. It's in the down in the back. It has to be dragged out. It has to be forced to be used. And it, it's what you know, what forces uh, and makes you think about the problem or the challenge or the project that you've been uh, um, faced with. So we heard earlier on about plan, do, check, act and spirals and circles and, and things like that. All those evolve from, you know, basically what we would call scientific methods. In other words, we observe, we develop theories, we uh, make predictions based on those theories and then we learn and we apply changes. What, what we're proposing with lean utilities and, and, uh, um, and, and Six Sigma and, and that kind of st these methodologies is you need system two approaches to tackle these uh, particular problems. The methodologies Lean and Six Sigma evolved around those uh, plan, do, check, act, those, those methodologies that stop you reacting and force you to stand back and think about uh, how you would tackle this problem. So you end up with uh, tools like mapping, uh, mapping the value stream, seeing, seeing the actual stream in your process, and then identifying uh, where's, where's the value, where's the waste. And this is a fundamental of the lean, lean philosophy. Six Sigma then is about identifying where the variation is, and then once you've identified it, uh, you can eliminate it. So a lot of what Emer has emerged in Lean and Six Sigma is based on that scientific method which evolved into Plan, Do, Check, Act, uh, which Deming actually brought to the, to, to the Toyota company, or to the Japanese, and Toyota adopted, and, and suddenly you had the Lean. And then Six Sigma evolved as well from Short and, and the Plan, Do, Study, Act. So why would we use this me methodologies? Why do we apply these methodologies? Well, it's to stop us reacting. A lot of us will react and we'll see the low-hanging fruit. We'll change the heat exchanger, that'll get us a bit there, or we'll, you know, uh, we'll do some, some of the obvious, obvious things. But what these methodologies force you to do is to actually stop and look at how value appears across your utility. If it's water, if it's gas, if it's electricity, if it's waste, where's the value uh, in that stream? And until you identify that stream, you won't be able to identify the value. So why would you implement one of these uh, programs? So just from my own perspective, I mean, fine, uh, CEOs and companies want to talk finance all the time. And I've just, I've spent, as I said, spent the last nine years, I've done over 500 projects through mentoring, uh, facilitating uh, green belts and black belts across all the, um, the Abbott vascular sites and in Lufthansa as well. And I've just picked out um, five projects here from a financial perspective that uh, I would have been involved with in some way. And you can see in terms of the first one, there was a water saving of 120,000 euros, process gas saving 290,000, air conditioning saving 60, waste acid recycling um, 40,000, sampling reduction, sampling to maintain regulatory requirements, but oversampling or doing too much sampling, 15,000 uh, euros a year. I picked those projects because when they started out, those savings weren't obvious. And that's an important point. We don't, we, we think we understand our processes. And it isn't until we go in and apply 
you know, these principles of, of mapping and trying to see where value exists in your, in your organisation, uh, it, 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 it emerges as you go through these mapping, mapping techniques. Very important then aspects are, are you know, uh, use of the methodology is from a quality perspective, maintaining compliance, you know, from you know product compliance, facility compliance, and also you know supporting uh, EPA programs and other uh, European uh, requirements that, that that are extended on organisations. And as James just mentioned there, you know, there's there's the benefit of aligning the organisation and and developing um, and sustaining green cr credentials. So. I, we, you're probably worn out now. We're here in Plan Do Check Act and Plan Do Study Act and all and all and the spirals and the circles. But basically, there are a, a lot of roadmaps, and you can apply a lot of the roadmaps. But the one I have found most successful is um, is this what's called the DMAIC roadmap, which is you define your project up front, you ensure all stakeholders agree and are aligned with what the project opportunity is and what the objective is. Um, once you've that done, the the, uh, the the project leader or the you know whoever's uh, facilitating the project can start with the data collection, and believe you me, the 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 low hanging fruit is always obvious. It's the really in depth stuff, the the stuff that's ingrained in the process is not always obvious to the investigator. So that measure phase, that developing that the mapping techniques, the identifying the value and displaying that value is, is, is just so important. Um, Central Solutions, who we're working with on uh, an EPA-funded programme uh, where we're implementing uh, these changes, um, they've developed a, a, a kind of a unique mapping mechanism here which helps display where the waste is. And it's very innovative. It's, it's, it's what's known as a Sankey diagram. But it shows, and it's, this is used in water, but it can be used in any of the utilities. And it shows you where your waste streams are, where are your opportunities to, to improve the process. Once you've, got, once you've developed that map, you can identify, um, uh, you can start analyzing the, the feedback from the map, and then identifying the waste across the whole value stream. As I said, whether it's water, gas, um, waste streams like acid or whatever kind of waste streams you have. Once you've done that, you can improve and you know, control then using uh, the various techniques. And again, these mapping techniques uh, can be adopted so that they can uh, implement control as well. Now, it's apt that we're here in the Aviva Stadium because um, on Saturday, you're going to see this process applied by Joe, Sh Joe Schmidt. He's taken what I would consider average Leinster, Ulster and Connacht players and he's, he's applied this process, he's analysed the data and he's, he's making them you know, rise above their, their own levels and even he's making the good players uh, look even better. And if he keeps going, some of those Leinster players might be able to play for Munster someday. <laughs> the hardest two parts of this roadmap are the first two, defining and scoping the project and putting the, the roadmaps in place, or the, or the maps in place identifying the value streams. Once you've done that, you've 80% of your project complete because the analyze, the improvements, and the control all fall out of that. So we've just implemented this uh, lean utilities program structure, and we're, we're, putting, we're rolling it out in the J&J the, the campus across Ireland. Um, and as I said, it's, it's, it's emerged from the um, the Lean Water Group that was established by the EPA. And just by the way, that, there's, the invitation is for anyone in the room can join that group, okay? Um, it's been, it was funded by the EPA, and um, it's, it's really to put a focus on improving utilities in, in, in organizations. We're rolling the program out, and um, we have set a target for the first wave of this program to uh, save 1 million uh, euros um, across the, the campus. Um, the data is quite important, and you know, managing the data and the value stream maps will, will generate that data and uh, document, um, document it and, and, and help you make data-driven decisions. Um, but you also need some training. So we are rolling out a module of lean utility training, and we're going to train uh, engineers, technicians in the facilities 
um, area to you know be able to follow that that different roadmap. The program support is the most vital part, and I think um, Peter spoke about it this morning uh, at the AbV site. Having pr a program in place and using that program to manage and implement um, the you know and support the engineers, technicians, and, and anybody who's going to be working in in projects in this area is actually key. And then, you know, the, you know that, that structure of that program, monthly meetings, uh, monthly reviews, and not, not by the, the managers of the, of the facilities, by the site leaders. The site leaders need to facilitate and, and, be, and take an interest in these programs. Um, as par again, as part of what we've been doing, uh, Central Solutions have developed uh, Site View, which uh, overlays on top of you know your existing data management systems and can ex extract the maps um, uh, similar to what, I, what I've just shown you there. Okay, so there's more information. Um, as I said, if you want to join the EPA-funded Lean Water Group, uh, Ruth, um, who's um, or sorry, Alice, who's at the um, uh, Central Solution Stand, will will sign you up for that. Um, and uh, basically. Um, Further information about that lean program is also available at the Central um, Solutions Stand. So I suppose to summarise, you need a program, you need a, uh, um, a, I suppose a roadmap to help guide the investigators as they go through their their continuous uh, improvement effort. And the last point I would like to make is, you know, a, a lot of people would say lean and Six Sigma. How are they? Use or how are they applicable in facilities? As I said, I've had a number of years' experience actually implementing these tools and techniques in the utility space and having massive successes. So, thank you very much for your time.